Ten years ago tomorrow, two of Buffalo's bravest lost their lives in the line of duty. Good evening, everyone. Lieutenant Charles Chip McCarthy and firefighter Jonathan Kroom died while battling a fire inside a deli on Genesee Street. 7 Eyewitness News senior reporter Eileen Buckley takes us back to that tragic day and speaks with a family member and a firefighter who says the pain will never go away. An alarm of fire, number 1815 Genesee between Burgard and Bailey. That call would be the last Lieutenant Chip McCarthy and firefighter Jonathan Kroom would respond to. It was August 24th, 2009. McCarthy went back into the super speedy deli because it was believed a person was trapped in the basement. Report from condition on the first floor there was a partial floor collapse. McCarthy fell through. Kroom returned to search and save McCarthy, but Cruz lost contact with both men. Part of the floor collapsed in the store, um, and at this time we have two members of the department missing. McCarthy was 45, Kroom just 34. It was obviously a very, very, very traumatic incident. Division Chief Mike Tuberdyke sobbed as he recalled the fire. He worked with both Kroom and McCarthy. Kroom was from Ladder 7, McCarthy from Rescue 1. Following an extensive investigation, the department made improvements to the two-in, two-out rule for city firefighters. Every day they are hit hard and harder about accountability and taking care of yourselves and your crews and watching over each other. Our loss and our pain continues. It's something that we think about all the time. Angie Housinger is Jonathan Kroom's mother. She says a heavy feeling takes over her every August. Because you know that something's coming, you know, and it takes you back. And for me, all I can do, like this year, when I wake up and, and I'm up in the middle of the night, I'll say, 10 years ago, he was still alive, you know, and I'll, I'll probably keep doing that, like, for every year. Kroom left behind two children. His son was born just two weeks after the fire. His daughter was only one. McCarthy was the father of three adult children. A decade later, Kroom's mom talks with new young fire recruits and shares the harsh reality of their jobs. Whenever I get the chance to talk to those young firefighters and, and let them know that um, one day you might go to work and you might not come home. This is the former fire site, but for the families, it's sacred ground. The McCarthy and Kroom families will gather here overnight to mark the time of death, a somber moment to remember their bravery. But anybody that knew these two guys just knew that they were um, two of the best individuals that you could ever, ever hope to have with you um, if you had to go down that dark, hot hallway. People have said to me, um, were you proud? It's always proud. But yeah, sorry. Eileen Buckley, 7 Eyewitness News. It's a fact. Half of all seniors will need nursing home care at some point in their lives. And tonight, the same coalition that backs that stat has also published a list of the country's most poorly rated nursing homes. According to the Long-Term Care Community Coalition, 16 of the 101 homes listed are located in western New York. They include absolute care for nursing and rehab in Orchard Park, Ellicott Center for Rehabilitation and Nursing in Buffalo, and Williamsville Suburban LLC. You're going to find a link on WKBW to all 16 nursing homes that are on that list right now. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has apparently tackled her fourth bout with cancer. Ginsburg received three weeks of radiation therapy for pancreatic cancer earlier this month. The radiation treatment began on August 5th to treat a tumor on her pancreas. According to the Supreme Court, the tumor was treated definitively and there is no evidence of the disease elsewhere in the body. They say Ginsburg does not at this point require any more treatment. For those of you concerned about her appearance at UB next week, rest easy. Officials say Justice Ginsburg's August 26th visit to the University of Buffalo and Klein Hands Music Hall in the city of Buffalo will be held as scheduled. All right, switching gears, it is considered the final dress rehearsal for starters. The Bills now just hours away from preseason game number three. Yeah, the Bills taking on the Lions tonight on the road. Seven Eyewitness sports reporter Jenna Caleri is live in Detroit tonight with a preview. How are the boys looking, Jenna? Yeah, Jeff, 
and Hannah, we're more than midway through the preseason and tonight, like you said, a big day for the starters. It's game three as the Buffalo Bills take on the Detroit Lions. We've seen a little bit of everything through these first two preseason games, but something we really haven't seen too much of are the Bills starters quarterback Josh Allen and company. It's a big opportunity for them. They haven't been able to do too much first through these first two preseason games and tonight it'll all be about finishing drives and finding that end zone. Normally game three is when we see that first team offense and defense a lot longer and that's true tonight through the first two games. We really saw them play only about two series, not even a quarter tonight. They'll play the majority, if not the entire first half. You know, week three is kind of the week where a lot of the guys that may have been sitting out, all the vets, you know, kind of get back in the action and start getting their bodies back in, in football shape. And um, so we're going to be playing against a really good defense. You know, they're, they're very well coached over there. And we saw them last year and we ended up winning that game. So I'm sure that they want to get back at us. So um, we know that and um, we're just excited to go out in there and play. Now one presumed starter we will not see on the field tonight. That's center Mitch Morris. He is unfortunately still in concussion protocol. The good news is